Hey, this is Aflevavi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And since we haven't done a movie or TV theme for a while, we're gonna do the Full House theme. Yep, it sounds a lot better than you think it's gonna sound. So I'm gonna play it for you so you can see and hear how it goes and then we're gonna break it down lick by lick with tabs right here on the screen. It goes like this. Okay, so we're gonna have our hands full with this one, so let's jump right in. You play this, the intro bass riff. Okay? Which is the E bass string. Then you play it again. And then you play three hammer on to four on the same string. Two on the A string. Four again on the sixth string. Two on the D string this time and then the A bass string. Okay, that's the riff. Now, when you play the A bass string, you wanna bar uh, the second fret up to the fourth string, okay, because you're gonna need the A chord in a moment. And you're gonna use the pinky and your third finger for five and four on the second string, like this. Okay? Now, this is the next lick. You bar the second fret, you play strings two, three, and four, uh, and the solo is on the second string, five, four, two. Okay? And then you play the E chord. And... Again, strengths two, three, and four, this time with the E bass. So that's the first phrase. Bar. Okay. You want to bar the second fret as you play the open A string. Okay, preparation. Um, and then this. The E chord replaces the first E bass, so then you play okay, the rest of the riff, and this time along with the A string, you play this. Strings uh, 2 and 3, the natural harmonic on 12. If you don't know how to produce a natural harmonic, you just place a finger on top of the steel part of the fret, okay, not above the wood, above the steel part. You just touch the string, you don't press it down, you just touch it, and you pick it, let it go. Okay? Uh, the reason you produce the sound is that you interfere with the string's vibration. So, um, that's the second phrase. That's the intro. Riff. A phrase. E. Re. 
rest of the intro riff then a with the artificial uh, the natural harmonics on 12 on strings two and three okay one last time Because now we're gonna play probably the most confusing part of the song which is the first verse the first verse um, is kind of a blues melody on top of the bass riff so I'm gonna try and play it slowly um... okay you play both lines at the same time so I'm gonna try and uh, break it down sometimes breaking things down is a lot more confusing than playing them so uh, if I make a couple of uh, confused mistakes along the way I ask for your forgiveness beforehand you play the E bass and then you play this the open E string the first string twice and then two on the second string then comes the confusing part you play the E string with three hammer on to four on the E bass string then two on the A string with another open E string then you play another E string with four on the E bass string okay so uh, actually all you have to keep track of is the bass riff and you just add open E strings to it so far so the first let's call it the first half of the first part of the first phrase is this then this and then this two on the second string, two on the D string, together. Kind of an A7 shape, but don't treat this as A7, treat this as a solo, okay? A uh, harmonized solo. So, this is what we have so far. I'm gonna try and play it a bit slower. Is this open E string three times two on the second string three on the E string but you have to push the A string in there somewhere so it's either between notes okay before the two on the second string or if you find that confusing, play it along with the second string. Or along with the last E string. Okay, before the two. Up to you. It doesn't make that much of a difference, okay, but the most accurate placing of the A string is between the last E string and the two on the second string. So you can work on it slowly or you can just, you know, try to play it in full speed and sometimes that's easier than playing it slowly. So that's the first phrase. Right? The second one is kind of the same thing. slightly different ending so instead of this all you do is this zero zero three zero on the E string and you want to bend the G uh, the G note a little okay the three you want to bend it up just a little okay to get that bluesy sound so that's the second phrase And 
again, you add the A string either after the second E string or along with the three. Your choice. G E. Okay, this is a bit easier than the previous one. Um, so take your time, play it slowly. Okay, this is confusing. I know it is. Um, I arranged this, and it took me about a month, uh, over a month actually, to get it right. Okay, to get the whole song right um, and play it from start to finish. So take your time with this one. It's really a great challenge. And then you play the first phrase again, okay? Exactly the same. The third line is the same as the first. Okay? And that's it for the confusing part. Now, um, between those three phrases, okay? Phrase one, phrase two, phrase three, which is the same as phrase one, you play this, okay? Uh, this short lick, okay, you know this already, it's the beginning of the bass riff, it's E, then three hammer on to four, on the E bass string, and two on the A string. So you play phrase one, then you play this, then you play phrase two, then you play this, then you play phrase one again. I told you this part is confusing, okay, I'm aware of that, so let's let me try and play it again. Cross my fingers. So... Same thing. Different ending. Okay? I played the A bass a bit early this time, so... Um, this takes work. There's nothing you can do about it. Some riffs take work. But fortunately, the rest of the song is a lot easier than this. Um, I don't mean that it's easy, I just mean that it's a lot easier than this. Okay? Told you, the beginning is the most confusing part. So let me try and play it one last time, then we'll move on. So, part one of the song. correctly this time, I know. And then this. C sharp minor, bar on four, A minor shape. I play strings three, four, and five. Then I let the chord go, I leave the bar on, I play strings three and four again. Then I put the chord on again and I play strings three and four again. So we get six, four, six on strings uh, three and four, and the C sharp bass at the beginning. Now you can play the whole chord, okay? You can add the second string to it if you want. Okay, just for harmony. Uh, I'm just showing you the basic, the basic uh, melody line. You can do whatever you want with the chord. Okay, you can add the second string if you want. And then four on the third string again. Okay, leave the chord. And then this. Two on the second string with your first finger. Okay? On the third string with your pinky, the fourth fret, then with your third finger, the fourth fret on the fourth string, and four on the bass as well with your th uh, second finger, okay? This. This is G sharp minor add 11. 
if you want to know. Um, and you play this. Okay? Now, instead of four on the third string at the end there, you can play the open second string. That's actually a better choice, even though you have to leave the chord when you do it, so... That's the connection note, the open second string. Then you put this, the G sharp, um, the G sharp minor at 11. And you take the finger off of the second string, you play the open second string. Then you put it on again. You can play the chord again. And then using your pinky, four pull off to two on the second string. Then, very quickly, you put the pinky back on the third string, you take the finger off of the second string, and you play this. Strings two, three, four, and six again, this time with the open second string. So you get a unison there. So you get a unison there. You get the same uh, note on both the second and third strings, and that kind of puts an emphasis on the B note. Kind of a nice addition. So C sharp minor, okay, or just the melody. I prefer this, okay, it's cleaner. Second string, G sharp minor at 11. Okay, the melody is this. Okay, just two zero two four two zero on the second string, but we need the chord. Then we play this. Okay? Four on the bass. You're already there. Two on the A string. Then four on the A string and you slide it up. Okay? To wherever you want and then you just mute the string. Okay, it's not supposed to end anywhere. It's just a slide. And then this. This is A, it's an A chord. You can play the whole A chord throughout the melody, or you can play the chord and then just play the E string again and again because that's the melody. Okay? Five times. Now, uh, I prefer the chord. Then this. B. The melody is on the second string, four, two, and then uh, four on the third string. Okay, and when I play the third string, I harmonize with the fourth string, and I put the pinky back on the second string because that's a B chord and not a B sus two chord, uh, and we want to keep the harmony going. So. And then, okay, you put the pinky back on just in case you accidentally play the second string or not accidentally and you play the second string, you don't want to get the ninth sound. Okay, so put the pinky back on. Um, so let's start again. Uh, mm, Play four four on the fourth uh, on the third string, and then this C sharp minor again, and again you play uh, six four six on the third and fourth strings. Okay, um, I'm sorry if I took it for granted, but you play the bass note for the chord at the beginning of the bar at least and then you can just play the bass whenever you want. Okay, that's that's just a given for fingerstyle. You have to play the bass note for any chord you play. So I just, I'm sorry I took it for granted, but it's written in the tab. You just play the bass note at the beginning of every bar and then you can add it whenever you want. You can play it with every note. 
okay, or, or just on the first and third beats. Okay, and then this. Okay, six, four, six on the third and fourth strings. Then five on the second string and six on the fourth, which are inside the chord. It's just the chord. And then this. Um, six again on the third string and four on the second string. So you just take the second finger off. Right? And then this. Right? It's A to F sharp minor. You play A again. The melody again is the E string twice, then 2-0 on the E string, so I use the pinky, uh, if you're playing A like this, okay, it's a given to use the pinky, if you're playing it like this, then just take the pinky off for a second, then put it back inside the A chord, so, then 4-2 on the second string, So you just play four on the second string, then play A again. That gives the illusion that you never left the A chord. And then this. One on the third string. So you again take the chord off, then you play this. F sharp minor. And the melody note is on the fourth string. So it's four on the fourth string and you play it and then you play the bass and then you play the chord any, uh, any way you like. Okay, just strum it if you like. You have the rest of the bar to fill, which isn't much time, but it's still time to fill. Um, you can also just arpeggiate it. Okay, that's enough sometimes. And then this. The end of the verse. A again. Three times. The melody note again, the E string. Then B, and you play that twice. The melody note is two on the E string. Then using your pinky, Four, four pull off to two on the E string, then you put it back on the second string and you play strings two and three, both on four, it's inside the chord, and then this, okay, which is two hammer on to four on the A string and two on the D string, three times. Okay, so bar those two, th um, so bar strings four and five, if you like. Okay, and then we have the chorus. So let's take a deep breath and repeat the first verse. Okay. C sharp minor, G sharp minor at 11. lick, bass lick, and then A, B, and then C sharp minor again, then A, F sharp minor, then A, B, lick again. So let's play the whole thing from the start of the verse.
chorus. Let me play it slowly. Okay, so you start with the E bass again, then you slide a D chord up two frets to the E chord because D, D sharp, E, just the natural order of the notes. So D to E. You just slide into the E chord. And then open E string, then you play B. Okay, just a normal B chord, strings 1, 2, 3, and 5. Then you take the chord off, you leave the bar on, and you slide from 2 to 4 on the E string. And you put C sharp minor on. Okay, be careful not to touch the E string as you do it. Okay, so it keeps ringing. And you play strings 2, 3, and 4. Okay, the chord is on, C sharp minor, and then the bass. So you have this. Then this. Um, this. Which is 5 on the 2nd string. Then, as you take the chord off, you leave the bar on, and you play the 3rd string on 4. You put these two fingers on, kind of like the G shape, uh, the G chord shape, but here, 7 on the bass with your pinky, 6 on the A string with your 3rd finger, and you play this. Now, you don't have to put this finger on the A string, but again, it's just in case you accidentally play it. It's better to be safe than sorry, because if you play this, that sounds bad, but if you add the chord note, if you accidentally play it, it sounds great. So, okay, second string, take the chord off, and as you make the transition, this is a B chord by the way, as you make the transition from C sharp minor to B, you play the third string on four. Okay, the bar. Then you play this. Strings uh, two, three, four, and six. Okay, this time it's a B chord. Okay, you have the bass here instead of here. So you're basically playing this. But the transition is a bit easier, so. Okay, this is the same thing. Exactly the same notes. And then you play five on the second string with your second finger. Okay, so it's and then A. Okay, again, the chord, then this. Zero two on the second string, open E string. And, as usual, you can play the chord again, you can harmonize with the chord, you can play the bass anywhere you like. Okay, I'm just showing you the rudimentary melody, you play it the way you want to play it. So, what we had was this. E, B, C sharp minor, B, A. Then you play this. Open E string as you make the transition into B. So then you put the bar on, you play B. Okay, the E string on two, the F sharp note. That's our note for the melody. Then four on the second, uh, four on the first string with your pinky. You take it off of the second string. That that's what I was gonna say. Okay, four on the E string, then you put it back on, you take the bar off, and you play the open E string, then you bar it again, and play the chord again. The melody note is again two on the E string. Okay, if this is confusing, it's just this. Okay, zero, two, two, four, zero, two on the E string. You just have to keep that in mind as you play the B chord. 
Right? Uh, so that's the way to do it. Open E string, bar, pinky, unbar, and then bar again. That's the first line. E, uh, B, C sharp minor, B, A, B. Then you play it again. Then you play it a third time, but you stop the melody at the C sharp minor chord. And then you just play the chord, then you play B, and then the next part of the chorus. So you have this. Okay, just play the chord. Then you have this. Okay? It's A and then G sharp minor. So A, the E string twice is your melody. Again, you can play the chord. Then 2 0 on the E string. Then this. Remember this, the G sharp minor at 11. Don't use the first finger yet. Put the pinky and third fingers on strings two and three this time, okay? With four on the bass. You play this. Then you play two on the second string and then four and four on strings three and four. So you start with four and four on strings two and three. You play two on the second string and then you put these two fingers back, one string down. Down musically, up physically. So now you can keep the third finger on the third string if you want the harmony. So and then just replace it with the pinky as you take it up a fret, uh, a string. Okay, so. Then you can play the um, third string again on four, and then it's this. You have a descending bass line. Okay, you start with C sharp minor. Um, you just play strings three and four twice. Then you play this, okay? Three on the A string, four on the second string, and then the open E string. So it's... Then it's this. Four, two, zero on the E string with the B bass, two on the A string. Then this. The A bass with 2 hammer on to 4, pull off to 2, pull off to 0, 0 again. Okay, just a legato line, hammer on, pull off, pull off, 2, 4, 2, 0. With A, so you have C sharp, C, B, A on the bass. And then you can play the A chord to the end of the bar. just the bass. I like to play the bass because it fits with the previous line and it also stops, uh, it creates kind of a break. And then 4 0 0 2 0 or if you want to make it even more dramatic 4 0 0 0 0. And then this
up to here. So let's just repeat the second half of the chorus, then repeat the chorus, then we'll learn the ending. Okay, so let's see if I remember this. One time, then the second time. Third time, only up to the C sharp minor. Then B, A, G sharp minor. C sharp minor, C bass, B bass, A bass. Intro line. Then again, up to two on the D string. Then you have this. Zero, four, five, six, seven on the E string. Then seven again. Then five on the B string. Then this. E bass, then 7, 8, 9, 9 slide to 10 on the A string, 9 on E, 9 on A, 9 on E, 7 on A, then the E chord twice, and that's the ending, so... That's the full house theme. Now before you go practice this, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons here already for you to learn. And leave a comment. If you have a request, just leave it there and I'll do my best to add it to the never ending list of requests. Now go download the tab from the website. The link is right below in the description and it's for free of course, like everything is on Lick and Riff. But if you still wanna give something back to Lick and Riff and help out with making these lessons and producing these lessons and working on these arrangements, there's a large blue donation button right above the tabs. You can't miss it and I'm very grateful for any donation you choose to make and I thank you in advance for it. You go practice this right now and have a lot of fun with this. This is a terrific composition. I really had a lot of time arranging it. I can't say the same for the lesson. This was really difficult for me to teach for some reason. This is a very, very confusing piece. It changes rhythms every second bar. So um, this is a real challenge and um, I know that you're gonna play it a lot better than I did during this lesson. So uh, go have fun and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very, very much for watching. Bye-bye for now.